Well, Mega Man from Chicago Land. I just wanted to weigh in on this whole uh, Shannon Sharp, Brett Favre situation. Now, I wanted to be clear. I am by no means justifying or defending Brett Favre at all. <laughs> the shit that I heard, yeah, it's pretty fucked up. You know what I'm saying? But I do want to address what Shannon Sharp said about Brett Favre, particularly this one thing right here. The federal government gave that money, but they're quick to talk about, oh, black and brown people, they be stealing. And then we need to cut out some of this, this, this pork and all this. Stop it. Yep. The bigger criminals, the people that steal the most, look like that. Now, the issue here is that this isn't just about Brett Favre. He is collectivizing and generalizing a whole group of people based on how they look. And the obvious double standard at play it's what bothers me because we know if Skip Bayless were to say the opposite or were to say something similar, like, you know, uh, <laughs> the biggest criminals look like you, Shannon, <laughs> he would have been called all types of racist. Despite the fact that there's more truth to what Skip Bayless would have said than what Shannon Sharp said himself. Let's take a look at some crime stats, shall we? According to the U.S. Department of Justice, FBI 2019 stats on crime in the United States, let's just look at certain types of crimes. Since Shannon Sharp said that the biggest criminals and the ones who steal the most are white people, you know. And also, why didn't he just say the biggest criminals or the biggest thieves look like you, Skip? instead of pointing to Brett Favre. He might as well have because he knows exactly what he was implying. So let's look at just uh, the total numbers of crime, if you will, between blacks and whites, according to this. Well, this, this is just for offenses charged. So this isn't for convictions, but this just gives us a ballpark figure on the criminality or the alleged criminality between these two groups. So, black, 1.8 million something odd offenses. White, 4.7 million something odd offenses. Now, mind you, the quote unquote white population is about five times bigger than the quote unquote black population here. So, for these stats, to only be, or for these numbers to only be about less than four times higher. Looks like it might be about three times higher as far as the offenses charged. When whites are about five times the population of blacks. That shows you that there's a higher per capita crime commission amongst the group of blacks in this country versus the group of whites, according to these particular stats. That's what will be suggested. So let's look at some more specific offenses, if you will. Murder and non-negligent manslaughter. The raw numbers, white people have less of that than black people. And <laughs> black people, like I said, are outnumbered by white people in this country by about five times. So for the raw numbers to exceed the raw numbers of whites when it comes to murder, it it definitely demonstrates something deplorable and uh, culturally reprehensible amongst this particular group of people, the, the black group of people in this particular case. So for murder amongst whites and non-negligent manslaughter, you got 3,650 incidents that were recorded in 2019 or the arrest for which. And then you have 4,078 arrests for murder and non-negligent manslaughter amongst blacks in 2019. And then let's go to robbery. Even the raw numbers for robbery amongst blacks exceeds the raw number of robberies amongst whites as far as the offenses charged. Now you all might try to throw some what is white privilege? White people get charged less than blacks. Eh, perhaps. 
but perhaps they get charged less than blacks because they're committing less offenses than blacks as well so when you look at just the raw numbers of robbery 29,677 amongst blacks versus 25,143 amongst whites that again shows you that there's a high prevalence of this particular offense this particular crime amongst the black community versus the white community considering the black population is about one-fifth of the white population so let's take that into consideration and then let's go even further to larceny and theft so for example there are 393,226 offenses recorded in 2019 for larceny slash theft amongst whites versus 178,937 incidents recorded for larceny slash theft amongst blacks the number for larceny theft amongst blacks is a little less than half of the raw numbers for the larceny slash theft numbers amongst whites but again when you consider the fact that the black population is one-fifth of the white population you would expect for proportional purposes for the number of larcenies and thefts to be one-fifth of the amount that white people commit no in this particular case it's a little less than one half so in any event it definitely demonstrates that per capita you have more crime and uh theft amongst the black community according to this particular table now like i said stats can be explained a gang of ways and perhaps this is just something that involves white privilege where white people are allowed to get away with more crimes than black people but let's consider what shannon sharp said in light of two recent convenience store robberies that were fatal this one took place in tupelo mississippi let's check it out The bigger criminals, the people that steal the most, look like that. The biggest criminals, huh? Now you see this absolute disgusting, callous, psychopathic, sociopathic, just disregard, utter disregard for humanity here, you know, didn't need to kill him. You know, the clerk complied with every command except for getting on his stomach, which it obviously wouldn't have mattered either way. He would have got on his stomach and just been shot in the back of the head regardless. And in the video that I saw before this, he tried to take more stuff from underneath the register. It looked like either he tried to rip the whole drawer out or maybe he saw some type of computer, which he might've thought was the cameras or some type of recording device. And he snatched that out and ended up leaving. And you know, he was masked up. So we don't know exactly his identity. He was charged, this particular person was charged, so he has a presumption of innocence. We don't know if the person charged is the person who executed this man, this uh, store clerk. But I guess we will see in trial what evidence they have that they're proposing. There's also another incident that recently happened in Georgia, the same state that Shannon Sharp grew up in. And I'm sure he won't be talking about 
that incident or the incident that we just watched. But the incident that happened in Georgia, I don't think there's any video footage for it, but there is a news article, so let's check that out. Police uh, revealing for the first time today that they actually arrested one suspect some weeks ago last month in California. That is where they caught up with that individual. But the search does continue for a second suspect. Police are going to the public for help in hopes that they'll generate some leads in the case that will lead to his arrest. Investigators say Warden was one of the masked men in this surveillance photo who shot and killed a clerk at the Quick Pick Food Mart in July. Police tell Fox 5 they arrested Warden's alleged accomplice in California last month. Officers responded to the Quick Pick Food Mart on Welcome All Road July 26. They discovered 44-year-old Tony Zanabe suffering from multiple gunshot wounds. Medics pronounced him dead on scene. A co-worker told reporters that Zanabe was shot despite doing everything the robbers demanded. He didn't, he didn't do anything. Just to give you whatever you ask, a good hands up. So why you want to kill? Warden is wanted for multiple armed robberies. Police tied Warden and the suspect who was arrested in California to an earlier robbery, which happened minutes before the deadly shooting, about a mile and a half away at the Dollar General store on Roosevelt Highway. And that's where the suspects were captured on surveillance. Detectives now turning to the public for help locating Warden in hopes of generating leads that will lead to an arrest in the case. The bigger criminals, the people that steal the most, look like that. So you see the stats, you see these two similar incidents, terrible, you know, robberies that didn't have to turn fatal. And it just seems like these killers were just out for blood, you know? We recently saw with the PNB Rock situation, robbery turned fatal. And I'm sure we can safely presume the skin tone of the person who committed that crime, that robbery, that murder. So, you know, we live in an era where white guilt is so promoted by liberal media, <laughs> by, by white liberal media, if you really wanna make it racial. And white guilt is so promoted that you could just blatantly lie <laughs> as long as the lie is directed towards a certain group of people, particularly white males. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's obviously what it is here because we could see a, a black man, excuse me, a black male talking to a white male, <laughs> blatantly lying about white males on national TV and the white male being so neutered that he can't even respond with facts to not only defend himself, but just to defend the truth, just to defend what really is going on in society. And you know, you, you might wanna call people like myself or people like Jason Whitlock, shout out to him. You might call people like us coons, when really the real cooning is the tap dancing that we see Shannon Sharp doing and spreading these falsehoods at the behest of white corporate media. So who are the real coons, you know what I'm saying? The, the people who are presenting the uncomfortable truth for the world to see so we could address it properly or the ones who spread false narratives in order to keep society distracted so we won't make progress. You could say that <laughs> white people are the, the biggest criminals or the biggest thieves, but there's no bigger theft than taking a life. And there's countless stories like these and the stats corroborate these stories. It's not like we're cherry picking these stories and just presenting them to you. This is what's really happening. You know, the, the weekend recaps that I've done and that I'll do some more of, it's, it's the same old shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Not only here, in multiple places, like Chicago, Philadelphia, New York, and then these incidents, which happened in the South. 
and the PNB Rock situation that happened in California. You know what I'm saying? Like it's it's too many incidents to ignore. So who's doing the real tap dancing? You know who's doing the real cooning? Y'all let me know. Kwame Man from Chicago Land. Peace and love.